Hey, Bart Miller here with Cycling Strong. I've got Dave here with Plan 7 Coaching, and we're talking shoes right now. Now, there's another segment, if you haven't checked it out, on road shoes. We took the old shoe, and we set up the brand new shoes. So go check that out, how we transitioned that. Now, <clears throat> I had the same question on a mountain bike shoe. So I brought these new Scots that I've got, uh, an absolutely amazing shoe, and I talked to him about how do we transition from here. Now, in what I love to do, I like all sorts of bikes, like most of you do. So I have a fat bike, I have this awesome, amazing BMC cross bike back here. Uh, I call it my gravel eating machine. Um, and so I have different types of shoes for different things. And so Dave's made it clear in the first segment, all shoes are not created exactly the same. So in knowing that, there's a few things that he gave us in the other segment to keep in mind. So Dave, I'm going to let you kind of just talk about the differences in how you'd set up a mountain shoe a little bit yes. and some things like that versus, you know, a pair of like this shoe that Louis Garneau has, you know, and let's just kind of talk about that a little bit. Okay. Okay. So uh, shoe setup for mountain bikes is quite similar to the shoe setup for a road bike. Mm -hmm. Some of the key factors, um, you know, not consider we, we talked about how you transfer fitting right. from one to the other, but some of the things that we're going to think about just in general for mountain bike setup is we want a shoe obviously that fits snug, okay. that your foot's not going to move around in. Right. Because on off road, you're going to have a lot of forces working against your body, the right. momentum changes. Yep. And if you hit into an obstacle and your foot slides forward and your toe jams the end. That's not a good feeling. Um, and so we want, a, number one, a shoe that fits right, fits snug. We want it to wrap around your foot. We just don't want movement. And, and then with that consideration, we want to find the correct fore and aft placement. And you've got a little bit more fore and aft capability because you've got two, two different <coughs> positions for mounting. And then you've got the ability to move it through this fore and aft pathway. Um, and that can play a big role on where the ball of your foot, that transfer point of power, mm -hmm. is in relationship to the center of the pedal. Okay. Uh, and, and then we're also, again, considering the pressure across the forefoot because we want that to feel even. We don't want isolated pressure at the inside ball of the foot. We don't want isolated pressure out here. And we don't want isolated like heavy pressure on the outside edge of the shoe. So with a, with a mountain cleat, which we don't have here, but you can see that we've got this space in here where we could mount it so that your foot sits wider, so that your foot sits more narrow, and then we have the fore and aft placement options. And so on Bart's uh, medium weight winter shoe, mm -hmm. uh, it looks like he's got those placed a little bit further back than neutral in the fore and aft. Um, and it, this particular cleat doesn't really allow for, um, for lateral adjustment. Yeah, they're a little tougher that way. Yeah, and so that can be accomplished in a few different ways um, to change stance width. You can use some pedal washers, um, but a lot of times our, our movement on a mountain bike uh, or on a, on a cross bike that we're using off-road, mm -hmm. we're a little bit more dynamic in our movement. Uh, with the road, we're right. cranking <laughs> over that steady repetition, but on the mountain and on cross bikes, uh, we have a lot more dynamic movement. Uh, but the key factor in the positioning is making sure that we've got the foot in a, in a good spot for power transfer, that we have it to where we're not stressing the small muscles of the foot to provide support. And we wanna make sure that we're getting that flat feeling across the forefoot. And so those are the considerations that we really need to think about when we're looking at setting up a mountain shoe. Uh, as far as like positioning for, um, for a variety of uses. Right. So you may, you may use the same shoe for mountain bike and cyclocross. Sure. And that would be, that would be my preference. I, I prefer you to use the same equipment as much as possible because 
you know, you train off, off road right. and I don't want you to be switching shoes. You know, if this is an off road bike and your mountain bike's an off road bike, use right. the same shoes. Right. Unless there's a big reason to not do it. Um, and so, you know, some of those considerations, like we talked about uh, what you have to do for Leadville. Right. There are places where even if you had the power to push the pedals, right. you may run into traffic that's already off their bike. Right. And so you're going to be doing some hike a bike. Yep. Um, and a very stiff shoe yeah. is not like a hiking boot yep. or, or, a, or a running shoe, right. which you may use for hiking. And so you're going to realize that the snugness of fit is super important right. because as you start hiking with your bike up a steep hill, if your heel starts moving, absolutely, and it's going to want to because the shoe is so stiff. Right. So if it doesn't fit your foot just right, you are going to burn a hole in the back of your shoe and burn a hole in the back of your heel. Yeah. And it's not going to feel great. Yeah. Um, so it's a really key factor that we get a shoe that fits your foot snugly. Right. Um, we want to think about our usage, right? So if you're going to spend 95% of the time on the bike, right. you're going to want a stiff shoe right. for power transfer. Right. If, uh, so we start to think about, oh, well, uh, you say Dave wants me to use same equipment right. for mountain bike and cyclocross. Uh, in cyclocross, there's potential for a fair amount of running. Right. Um, if you watch uh, World Cup cyclocross, um, you see that those guys run a lot. Tom. A lot of the courses in the U.S., there's not as much running. And so you, you want to think about the type of terrain you're going to use. So there right. are some of the companies, when they make an off-road shoe, they make a super stiff uh, racing style shoe. And then they make one that has a little bit like high end. Right. So you can, you can get your high end product. Right. But uh, they make it so that there's a little bit of flexibility mm -hmm. at the forefoot. Right. So that if you're off the bike running, you you don't have that potential for the heel to right. cause you problems. Now one thing I've noticed in the Scott too is like these are a little softer so that when you get off you do get some grip even though um, you're not getting a bend at least you're getting a little you're, bit of hold. You've got which some is, traction. Yeah, yeah which is nice. The other thing that they've done really good in this shoe is how they've built this toe box because I don't care what you're doing mountain biking all that you're on and off your shoe when you're on yeah. a bike like this and that really does help a lot keep the shoe from getting all banged up beat up sure. uh, in the front of it. So I think that's really great too. Uh, most of the shoe companies, uh, they have a variety of options. Right. Right. You've got your full gas race option. Yep. And and you know if we were talking about what you're going to use for mountain bike racing and for cyclocross racing. Right. Overall, this mm -hmm. is the shoe. Yeah. High end, very stiff for power transfer. Yes, we may be off the bike here and there. Right. But when you're on the bike trying to produce power, we want the maximum power transfer. Yeah. It's called a mountain bike race, not a running race, right? Exactly. <laughs> and, and we don't want the foot to get stressed because the foot's our basis for transferring power. And if it starts to get tired and cramp up yeah. or go numb, yeah. we, we've impacted our ability to, to produce power. Yeah. We don't want to do that. So Silver Rush is a good example of what Dave's talking about. A lot of people that do Silver Rush think that they need a different kind of a shoe because you run the ski course at the very beginning of that. If you haven't seen that, you ought to look at it. But you run up a face of a mountain, then you get on your bike and you yeah, ride. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's true. And it is a pretty heavy run. And yeah, you're in a crappy shoe for what you're trying to do there. But that's over in four minutes. Yeah. And then you're on that bike the rest of the day. Yeah. You know, so all of a sudden. For a long demanding race. Yeah. So, you know, I guess you could run to the top, switch shoes. By the time you do that, you're. I don't know, it's not like you have taken up a ton of time, but you have. Yeah. So, you know, you just need to think through that kind of stuff a little bit, I guess. But yeah, there's a lot of considerations. So if you're if you like to do a little bit of racing, yeah. but mostly trail riding, right. and maybe you're doing some exploration out on the trail. Exactly. A little bit of hiking off of the bike. Right. You're doing hike a bike to get over some scrabbly terrain. Right. You may want to not go with as stiff of a shoe. And anymore, a lot of the companies, they are telling you what the stiffness exactly. index is. Yeah. Uh, 
you know, everybody kind of has their own range. Right. So you want to become familiar with the range of the brand you're looking at. Right. So, you know, you may, you may decide to go out on a two week mountain bike tour. Right. Go somewhere and you're, you're with a guided group. Right. You're going to be doing a fair amount of riding, but you're also going to do some exploration. Right when you're in the middle of your ride, yeah. you may not want to use your full gas ratio. Right. You may want to have a shoe that has a little bit more flexibility right. and, and that is going to allow you to be on and off the bike so that you don't have to carry a pair of shoes in your pack. Um, so there's and, a company called DZR. If you guys want to go check those guys out, I have a pair of their shoes. Oh, cool. And that's exactly the same thing. And more of a city life, not really say city life, but let's say that you're you're riding to the grocery store, you want a good looking yeah. shoe, but it's stiff enough to get you there, great. Sure. But you pop off, you're able to walk around the grocery store, enjoy, yeah, it's just more comfortable than you're gonna yeah. walk in a shoe like this. Yep, you're not, you're not having to clunk around right. in a shoe that will not bend at all, exactly. which is what you want for a race application, right. but not necessarily for a more casual uh, situation. Exactly. Um, so, this is kind of a uh, full gas race shoe on down. Uh, again, the companies who are doing solid shoe production, they have a variety of options and you want to familiarize yourself to the type of activity that you're doing yeah. so that you have maximum comfort and, and, and enjoyment when you're, when you're out on the bike. Uh, now, when you go out fat bike riding, yep. obviously... Uh, snow out there on the ground, snow, obviously. It's you're cold. In. Yep. Um, and, and you may be on and off the bike, uh, feet in the snow. Yep. This shoe is not going to be very pleasant. No. It's going to get filled up with snow on the side. Even yep. if you're wearing some gaiters, the snow's going to push up into it. Yep. Uh, there's not much insulation. And so, you know, on a, on a springish day, eh, whatever. Right. But on, on a full winter day where maybe you're breaking trail too. Right that snow is gonna be all over the place. Yep. And, and so Bart brought down his lake full on. Yeah, 303s. The full on uh, snow bike shoe. I mean, it's like you could use this for snowmobiling too. Yeah, it looks you really like. could. I mean, it, it's an amazing shoe. Breeze real well. So it's got, it's got the expectation that you're going to be on and off the bike. Yep. Um, it, it feels like it's still a pretty stiff shoe, but yep. I can see some flexibility yep. to it. And so that's going to provide you um, with a lot of options when you're on the bike and out in the snow. Yeah. Obviously, a lot of insulation. Yep. Uh, neoprene tongue. When a size bigger. Because so of the you sock. can wear some warmer socks. Yep. yep. And so that's going to be a consideration when you're doing cleat placement. You're mm -hmm. going to want to check where the ball of the foot is. Yep. Because it's not going to match up the way that you wear your race shoe. Exactly. Um, one of the considerations for fat bike is your stance width is mm -hmm. automatically going to be much wider. Right. And, and I've heard of people like come out of doing a lot of fat bike riding and they have some weird knee issues yeah. when they first transition back over to their standard mountain bike or road bike because now all of a sudden they're back to narrow again. Right. So that's something to consider. There's not a lot that we can work around it right. though. Right. Um, other than, uh, it's something to realize that could happen. Um, but a very specialized piece of equipment. Uh, you know, this is, would be terrible to try to race a summer race in. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Uh, very heavy, yeah. but it fits the application. Yep. Um, and, and so also like if you were in really cold weather, but you could ride your standard mountain bike, good yeah, option yeah. for yeah. training. Yep. Um, if you can't take the trainer anymore. Yep. Uh, then he's got this mid-weight Garneau boot, which again, a, a really specialized piece. Um, you've got all of the things that you would have in your standard shoe as far yeah. as, it, I mean, it looks almost like they're trying to make this one be a, a performance type and it of is. winter boot. I mean, I raced in this on cycle cross this year and I have to tell you, as far as mid-weight goes, holy cow, nice, because this is so flexible that you really don't notice it, but you're not a gator, and yet you're super still warm enough, yeah. and you've got the traction of more of a boot. So 
for cyclocross, it was phenomenal. Yeah, on those bad weather days where you know your shoes are going to get filled oh, yeah. up and you're going to be freezing, <laughs> this could be a great option yeah. just to help eliminate getting yep. cold too fast. Again, yeah. if your focus is high performance right. on the cross bike, yeah. even in bad weather, you're more than likely going to want to stick with those. But this is a great option right. um, to, keep, to keep you warmer, drier. Now this shoe is going to fit more similar to a race shoe. Yeah. Be, they're, they haven't bulked it up a ton. Right. You may, you may choose sizing a little bit different, anticipating that you'd wear a, a thicker sock. Yeah. But the positioning is going to end up being a lot more similar to what your, what your high performance mountain bike shoes would be. Yeah. Um, Covers a lot of it, I think. Yeah. Really. So high performance shoe, freeze your butt off boot, which gives you, you know, like I said, it's, this is for snow, extremely cold, this, you know, that kind of stuff. And then just a really mid range of an in between these three. So um, I've used these mountain biking twice. Absolutely love them just to go out on a, you know, it's a nice day, but muddy as all get out. Sure. It's great to just dig through the mud and the water and yet not have it so hot that I I'm, I'm ready to just chuck them in five seconds. So you guys choose out there. Um, setup is very similar once again to the road bike. Go figure out on the road bike segment how Dave found the ball of my foot. He marked that, did his measurements, started to go from there so that he was dialed in. And then uh, go out there, ride. If you have questions, check out Plan 7 Coaching. Uh, talk to Dave. Once again, we brought up in the other segment, take pictures of your old shoes if they work great. Keep them for documentation and then take pictures of your new. Perfect. Cool. See you later.